This is the ninth part of our story about a man going to work in the morning. If you haven't already, I would suggest that you listen to my first story or the previous videos of this second story. All the sentences are naturally English. I'm only emphasizing the rhythm and intonation of the sentences to indicate how English is spoken. It's five after nine. I'm unable to find a parking space. What am I going to do? I've got no choice at this late hour but to pay the price of a parking tower. This tempo helps carry your meaning quickly and easily to your listener's ear. We'll begin practicing at the end of our story and then add more pieces until we come to the beginning. This is how we build fluency. The end has been practiced more than the beginning. So once you begin the story, the rest follows easily. I will repeat each sentence three times and explain the techniques being used. Okay, let's begin. A parking tower. A parking tower. A parking tower. First of all, we hear two content words, parking and tower, and one function word the indefinite article a. Content words are pronounced more strongly, while function or grammar words are unstressed, spoken lightly and quickly. Now, here's another piece of this sentence, so we put the two together. Pay the price of a parking tower. Pay the price of a parking tower. Pay the price of a parking tower. Pay and price are clearly pronounced. The and of are unstressed. We also hear the technique called linking, when two words are spoken together without stopping. Linking is necessary to speak fluently and to understand English at normal speed. In this example, the words price and of a are linked. Price of a, price of a, price of a parking tower. Now here's the next part of the sentence with all three parts combined. At this late hour, but to pay the price of a parking tower. At this late hour, but to pay the price of a parking tower. At this late hour, but to pay the price of a parking tower. Let's look closely at what's happening here. Look at those strongly and lightly pronounced words or syllables to understand the importance of stress in everyday speech. At this late hour, but to pay the price of a parking tower. The two word phrases but to and of a are spoken just as quickly as a single syllable word such as pay or price. This gives the listener a feeling of speed because we are not wasting time on unimportant function words that everyone is familiar with. The content words in this part are this and our. The unstressed, lightly pronounced words are at, late, and but, to. Our first linking is t with th at this. Put your tongue in the th position first. Stop your breath like a t, then quickly pull your tongue back to finish the word this. The t in the word at has been eliminated entirely because this t th sound is too slow for conversation. The result sounds like this. At this, at this, at this late hour. This and late are linked together. This late. This late. This late hour. Another linking is late with hour, with the American flap T sound. Listen. Late hour. Late hour. At this late hour. A British speaker would probably say late hour. But Americans pronounce the T between vowels more quickly closer to a D sound, late hour. 
The two T's in but and to are also linked, and both vowels reduce to schwa. But to, but to, but to pay the price. The final result sounds like this. At this late hour, but to pay the price of a parking tower. Let's continue and add another phrase to our sentence. I've got no choice at this late hour but to pay the price of a parking tower. I've got no choice at this late hour but to pay the price of a parking tower. I've got no choice at this late hour but to pay the price of a parking tower. The content words are got and choice. At the same time, I've and no are unstressed. The words choice and at are linked. Choice it. Choice it. Choice at this late hour. Here is the whole sentence. I've got no choice at this late hour but to pay the price of a parking tower. Let's add another sentence. What am I going to do? I've got no choice at this late hour but to pay the price of a parking tower. What am I going to do? I've got no choice at this late hour but to pay the price of a parking tower. What am I going to do? I've got no choice at this late hour but to pay the price of a parking tower. Here is a good example to show the importance of stress and keeping the rhythm. Look at these two sentences. What am I gonna do? I've got no choice at this late hour but to pay the price of a parking tower. What and do are the content words which are clearly pronounced. The four words am I going to are completely unstressed because they're easy grammar words that everyone knows. What's important to remember is that these five syllables, am I going to, are spoken within the same time limit imposed by the rhythm of the sentence. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? What am I are easily linked. What am I? What am I? What am I gonna do? In the English speaking world, the phrase going to, when used with another verb, is always reduced. Here are the possibilities from slow to fast. Number one, what am I going to do? This is slow and very clear. Two, what am I going to do? Some vowels, am and to, become unstressed. Three, what am I going to do? The NG simplifies to a single N sound, which is easier. 4. What am I going to do? The NT between vowels drops the T. What am I going to do? Finally, all the vowels except the pronoun I are reduced. Here is the two sentences again. What am I going to do? I've got no choice at this late hour but to pay the price of a parking tower. Now we can add another sentence. I'm unable to find a parking space. What am I going to do? I've got no choice at this late hour but to pay the price of a parking tower. I'm unable to find a parking space. What am I going to do? I've got no choice at this late hour but to pay the price of a parking tower. I'm unable to find a parking space. What am I going to do? I've got no choice at this late hour but to pay the price of a parking tower. Unable, find, parking, and space are clearly pronounced. The unstressed words are I'm, to, and a. There are two linkings, one between I'm and unable, 
and one between find and a. I'm unable. I'm unable. I'm unable to find. Find a. Find a. Find a parking space. Let's add the last piece of this sentence. It's five after nine. I'm unable to find a parking space. What am I gonna do? I've got no choice at this late hour but to pay the price of a parking tower. It's five after nine. I'm unable to find a parking space. What am I gonna do? I've got no choice at this late hour but to pay the price of a parking tower. It's five after nine. I'm unable to find a parking space. What am I gonna do? I've got no choice at this late hour but to pay the price of a parking tower. The content words are the numbers five and nine. The unstressed words are it's and after. The first linking is between five and after. Five after. Five after. Five after nine. The second linking is between nine and I'm, even though they are separated by a comma. Our voice does not need to break here. The intonation slows down, but the two words do not break. Listen. Nine, 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 I'm unable to find. Now, listen and practice our story without breaking the rhythm. Practicing over and over again like this will help you to understand English spoken at normal speed. It's five after nine. I'm unable to find a parking space. What am I gonna do? I've got no choice at this late hour but to pay the price of a parking tower. If you count the number of stressed words in these two sentences, there are sixteen. If you count the number of words or syllables that are lightly pronounced, you will find there are. 24. This means that a native English speaker needs to hear less than half the words in a conversation to understand it completely. This is the secret to listening comprehension, listening only for the important words. The purpose of this exercise is to improve your listening comprehension and learn how to read and speak in a more pleasant and interesting way. Here is the way we would read this story aloud. Every morning, at about the same time, Mr. Black leaves for work. Here he is driving up out of the underground garage. Good morning, George, a neighbor calls out, but Mr. Black's not paying attention. He's checking his watch, afraid that he might be late. Oh, good Lord, Mr. Black's crashed into the rear of a taxi. Immediately, the men jump out of their cars and start to argue. Who's right? Who's wrong? It doesn't matter. The custom here is to argue and fight. Oh my gosh, what a traffic jam. Just listen to the noise. Shouting, cursing, the blowing of horns. But you can't get out. That's impossible. Everyone has stopped behind the accident, waiting for the drivers to settle their dispute. When will it end? Lord only knows. Neither driver wants to back down. Neither driver wants to lose face. And why is that? It's the loser who pays. It's not my fault. He stopped too fast. What do you mean? You were driving too close. When the drivers can't agree, the police will handle it. The officer in front is directing the traffic, while the other one is writing up tickets. Now that that's over with, I can get to work. Aha! There's a space right in front of that car. Better grab it quick, before it's gone. It's just my rotten luck today. A no parking sign is blocking the way. Until you've sat behind a steering wheel, you'll never understand the frustration I feel. It's five after nine. I'm unable to find a parking space. What am I going to do? I've got no choice at this late hour but to pay the price of a parking tower. Now, go on to the next picture, picture J of our story. There are ten parts in all. Thank you for watching and listening.